So this video here is on how to make the transition that uh, goes on the top of the chimney. So when we took the uh, pieces out of the press, the corners had a bit of a radius on the bottom. And we actually need to true them up so they have nice square corners right at the bottom for when we weld it to the chimney itself. So in this video, I'm going to true the corners up. I've got a bench stake and I've locked it into the vise. And I'm, it's, it's got a sharp edge on the bench stake because I need to dress it onto a sharp corner. So I've got a cross pane hammer there, you don't need a big hammer, just a 12 ounce cross pane and I'm just pressing it around the edge to create a sharp corner. I've got to do it on both sides, so I'll work on one side of the stake first and then I dress it over on the other side, uh, other side to get the other corner square. So you just need to knock it down gently, you don't need to bash, bash it too hard, just work it over gently and get the corner nice and square. So when I put it back, uh, when I when I put the folded sides together on the table and line one side up, I find there's a bit of a gap on the other side. Uh, you can see a bit of a taper in it. It's more pronounced than this shot here. So you're not going to worry about what's happening on the other side. You're simply going to line up one side and tack it together. And then you'll pull the other side in together with clamps. The important thing that it is actually lined up level across the bottom. Don't worry about what the top is doing. So you need to clamp it together with a couple of vice grips, one top and bottom. Uh, once you've got it uh, held together, you're going to leave a gap. You need to get the weld to penetrate down through it. Uh, tack it together with a bit of um, 1.6 millimeter stainless wire. And you need a blob on the surface because uh, you may have to stretch a weld occasionally and you need a bit of filler material to be able to do that. So what I've found is when, I, when the welds have cooled, it's contracted between the arrows that you can see on the screen. The ones on the ends are fine, but the, the blobs of metal in between have contracted. So in the next video, I'm going to show you how to stretch those out. So in this video, the very first thing I'm going to do with the uh, transition sitting on top of the stake is to tap the, each weld down flat. This will pull the two surfaces down level if they're slightly uneven because they need it to be absolutely perfect before you start to weld them up. The second thing is I'm now going to flip the ball pane hammer over and I'm hitting the weld absolutely smack on the button with the ball of the hammer. That's going to stretch those blobs of weld and open the gap back up to the width that I was looking for. You'll see that I'm not hitting the ones that I had uh, arrowed in the video because I'm doing the other side of the transition. I then just tap it flat. Again, make sure the transition is sitting hard onto the surface before you start hitting it with a hammer. So this was what I was trying to correct in terms of the uneven surface. You can see the right hand side is slightly down right uh, beside the left hand side and that's what we need to knock it flat for. Here uh, I've knocked them flat. You can see it's crowning in the middle. I'm not worried about that at all. And this is after it's been knocked down flat on the stake and the welds. You can see some welds have been stretched. Any hammer marks are right over the top of the weld zone. They will be covered up with weld and you won't even know that it's been hammered down. Right, so I've gone away and welded it after I'd leveled them. I've welded uh, from the bottom up to the top. I've used a 1.6 millimeter wire. I've wanted to overfill the joints. I welded up vertically because that would allow more build up as I went. And I welded it at about 85 amps. And I welded it at a very slow pace to get the build up. I wanted build up so that we could actually grind something off and sand it off. And I didn't want that much penetration on the inside. So now I want to clean the weld off on the inside of the transition. Uh, I've already done it in this photo that I'm showing you. Uh, we need to remove it because what it does is when you hammer it from the outside, if you've got lumps or blobs of metal sticking on the inside, what it does is it damages the bench stakes or the stakes and it leaves pitting marks and bruises and things like that on them. So here's a photo. All the marks on the surface are actually from welds that have been driven into the stake and you just end up damaging the tools. So we want to remove the weld on the inside uh, so that we don't actually cause those problems. So we're going to use the little Makita linisher. Uh, I'll show you in a video how to do it. So I'm just using the wee 10 millimeter linisher to go straight up the center of the weld. Because the transition's quite narrow, I can't get a sander in there to do anything other than use the linisher. I want to knock all those blobs of weld off. So when I put it on the stake to knock it down, level it up, um, we're not going to have any marks on the stake. 
the surface won't be that great after, after we've used the liner ship, but it's not important, it's on the inside, it's not going to be seen. Uh, it's got about 90% um, penetration all the way along. It's got a couple of gaps where I didn't quite get it right, no big deal. But uh, I'm just using the linisher, as I say, to remove the, the lumps of weld and get it down flush with the surface, and that's all I'm going to do with it. Okay, so I've finished my weld, I've cleaned up the inside. I'm now using the grinder uh, with quite a fine disc on it. It's not a very aggressive disc. And I'm just running down straight down the centre of the weld. Uh, I just want to grind the weld down. It was about two millimetres high. I want to, want to try and get it down to say about 0 0.3, 0 0.4 of a millimetre off the surface. So I've still got some material to sand off. I don't want to um, grind into the sheet. I actually just want to take the weld straight down the centre as best as possible. I don't want to damage the uh, transition in any way. It's simply at this stage about weld removal. I tried to go into it with the sander now. Uh, as you can see, I've said the sand, the sander needs to be as flat as possible on the surface, even if you're dragging the guard on the surface. You don't want to be up on its edge or toe, otherwise you put gouges into the surface. This needs to be ground or sanded with uh, proper sanding discs with backing pads. You should never, ever use flat discs for this sort of work because it will just um, give you an uneven surface which is full of undulations. You need flat sanding pads to do this sort of work. After the initial sanding, I find that it's still crowning in the middle. So I just, right down the centre, I use a plastic mallet to knock it back slightly. You need to keep checking it with the rule so you don't go too far, but make sure you're hitting down through the centre and not off to the sides, otherwise you'll put dents and everything. So just keep putting the rule on it and checking it. Still crowning at the top, the bottom was actually quite true, it was sort of the last, you know, 150 millimetres at the top that was incorrect. I'm just going over it with a planishing hammer, I'm not that keen on planishing hammers, I generally use just a cross plane hammer. Um, but I'm just very gently tapping it down on the stake, so that was why we removed the weld at the start, otherwise we wouldn't be able to get a good uniform flat surface. I mean the weld on the inside. So a bit more sanding. Taking another cut down through the middle. That disc has actually got a bit flat. I've just gone and put a brand new sanding disc on here. Once they glaze up, they won't cut that well. They'll actually just cause more friction than grinding. Put new discs on every so often. Uh, and you can see once again that I'm cutting at uh, 90 degrees from my previous run. Absolutely crucial if you want to try and get a flat surface on a piece of metal. You've just got to keep cutting at 90 degrees for the previous run. Uh, it can actually also show you where you've ground your previous marks out to show that you're actually making progress. The sander has been running up to the edge of the bend there, so I'm running along here. You can see the sander is absolutely flat as I'm taking long strokes. Uh, just trying to put, uh, or get rid of a bit of sharpness on that radius that I've got there. Trying to put a bit more uniformity back into it. Uh, you can see there that it was hot. Shiny surfaces radiate heat very, very well. So be careful once you're working on a shiny surface. So I've sanded up the body. Now I want to remove this top edge that's uh, sitting here on both sides because we need to put a flat plate on the top of this uh, transition so we can weld this figure on. So I need to remove these outside edges. So you can see I'm just uh, sanding from side to side. Keep the sander as flat as possible and horizontal as well so that you're not, uh, this lip isn't going to be pointing up or pointing down. It's actually going to be uh, effectively horizontal with the side once you've finished with it. So just both ends, just tidy them up, you just want a flat surface. We now need to cut the top to fit on top of it. And the top just wants to actually sit on it. It wants a good shelf all the way around the outside so we can get a good fillet of weld around there when we sand it off we'll still have good weld material there so just sitting on it's tacked together with four tacks down either side 
and just another view so you can still see the slight gap there but that will all fill in with wire so here it is i've welded along two edges with the tig torch uh, 72 amps with a 1.6 millimeter wire and i wanted to overfill it so there was material left on after i sanded it off and the two edges on the right hand side and the top were welded with the mig and here are the settings on the screen for the mig tool okay so there's about uh, seven minutes of video here which is to do with the grinding of the top of the uh, transition and the sanding of it uh, once it's been ground down then i use the orbital sander on it so this piece you can see at the moment i'm using a fine cut uh, i think it's a pyrolite uh, a grinding disc the grinder's actually up on its toe it needs to be right up on its head that's how grinders cut when they're right on their edge. So grinding it uh, first with that, and then I use the orbital, uh, sorry, the sander, sanding disc, which is an 80 grit flat disc uh, for the backing pad. You'll see that. Keep it absolutely flat onto the surface, even if the guard drags on the surface occasionally. And then the last piece is done with a um, orbital sander with a 60 grit uh, zirconia disc in it. A zirconia sanding disc uh, and that if you look at the video at about um, 17 minutes 30 you'll see the finish that I achieved it takes a lot of practice to achieve that sort of finish don't stress about it starting out it takes a long time to gain the skill set to do that but you know, if you follow this video you'll certainly get a long way to achieving that so I'm going to stop talking go to the end of the video of the sanding and then I'll show you how to do the uh, piece on the top.
So the top has been welded on. I've got a rule and a scribe. I've scribed a line from corner to corner. Uh, and in the center of that, where the two lines cross over, I'm going to center punch that and draw a circle. So here's the two circles. Uh, one has a radius of 66 millimeters. That gives us an outside diameter of 132 millimeters. That is what the spigot will sit into. The spigot is 125 ID and it's got a 6 millimeter or two times uh, the material thickness is 6 millimeters, so 131. So when you drop it into that 132 circle, you'll be able to see the line which allows you to centralize it absolutely spot on. The circle in the middle um, is, I think, 100 millimeters. I haven't got it in my head. Uh, but you can see I've center punched all the way around that because I'm going to cut on the inside of that line with the plasma cutter. With the light on the plasma cutter, you won't be able to see the line, so you center punch it, cut right up to it, and I'll show you how to die grind it out from there. So with the die grinder, obviously I'm standing over the top of it, but what I'm doing is I'm going in and out of the hole as I go around the hole. If you just go around the hole, it won't do anything, it won't cut properly. But if you go in and out of the hole continuously, up and down, like I am, and then just move around the hole slowly, it'll cut a lot more aggressively. And I'm cutting right up to the line, so I just want to see the line that I was actually work, working to before. So for the spigot, it was 125 millimetres internal diameter, so we have to add 3 millimetres to 125 and times it by pi. Gives us a cut size, I think from memory, of about 402. I haven't checked that. I've rolled it up, I've tacked it with three tacks as you can see, uh, and I've left the gap in between of about one and a half millimetres because I want full penetration through the joint. I've put it in a vise to clamp it together if uh, it was slightly out. It just makes it easier to hold it. And then I trued it up on the stake. Got it flat on the stake, making sure it was level before I started to weld it. I welded it at about uh, 82 amps. I welded in from both sides. If you weld just from one side to the other, when you get to the other side, you can get uh, it'll overheat and burn away. So welding from either side into the middle, I find that the easiest. Everyone will have a different way of doing it. But I uh, wanted some build-up, so I had some material to sand off. You can see on the inside that it's penetrated through, and it's got a bit of, you know, a big gnarly bit there that uh, will have to be ground off. That will be stripped back with the die grinder with a spiral band on it, a 38 millimeter spiral band. It's got zirconia um, spiral bands on it, and that'll strip, strip that off, clean it off. So this is what it looks like after I've cleaned it off on the inside. It's as far as you need to go with it. It's just to remove the weld because the flue has to drop down into that. And if there's a weld there, it'll catch on it. So it's just got to be cleaned off. It's never going to be seen. The outside has been ground down uh, and then it's been sanded with the standard sanding discs that you've seen in the other videos. Once again, just remember to keep moving in different directions to try and get a, even though it's a curve, trying to get a flat surface on the curve. And after that, it's been sanded up with the orbital sander and that's the finish that was achieved with it. So all you need to do from there is to sit the spigot on top of the transition. Make sure the seam is on the back face of the transition. Uh, just hiding it from view, even though it's cleaned up pretty good. It sits within the circle that we drew on it at 132 millimeters. You can see I've got it clamped on pretty well there. Sitting on the big heavy steel table, I've put six tacks around the outside. Uh, I've TIG welded the whole thing on, so six good tacks before I even start to fully weld. And here is the finished product, fully welded on. All it has to have done basically is a wire brush to get uh, rid of the heat discoloration, and that is it. It's finished.